This is episode 12 of the Tax Smart Daily, a daily video series for real estate investors to learn how to save money on taxes and stay out of trouble. I'm Brandon Hall and I'm wishing you a happy Friday. Hope you have a good rest of your day and a good weekend. Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. It'll help you get notifications whenever we drop new videos. And it also helps me grow this YouTube channel. So please help me subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Also, I invite you to join the TaxSmart Real Estate Investor Facebook group and the TaxSmart newsletter. Links to both of those are in the description of this video. Lastly, if anything that I say resonates with you, leave a comment, ask a question. I really enjoy engaging with people. It's my oxygen. I really appreciate the, the those of you who take a few minutes out of your day to start a conversation, ask a question, or leave a comment. So thank you to all that have done that so far. Today's topic is around cost segregation. It comes out of our Facebook group. It's a question that they ask, if I get a cost segregation study performed on my rental real estate, will I be able to offset the gain that I have coming from stock options through my W-2 job? Now, if you have read any of our real estate professional status stuff, or if you've watched any of our content on real estate professional status and passive losses, you know that the answer is no, that's not going to work unless you qualify as a real estate professional. The cost segregation study is the practice of looking at my rental property and saying, hey, the rental property is made up of a lot of components and those components are not going to last 27 and a half years. So let's do a study to revalue or to allocate value to these components that are going to last a shorter amount of time. So after a cost segregation study, you get a report that shows you the value allocated to your five-year property, your seven-year property, your 15-year property, and your 27 and a half year property. So basically it takes the 27 and a half year value that you have upon acquisition and it reallocates it to five, seven, 15, and 27 and a half year property. But then you can bonus depreciate any component with a useful life of less than 20 years. And since today bonus depreciation is 100%, that means that I can 100% expense the five, seven, and 15 year value allocations. And typically that could be 20 to 30% of, of the total purchase price, depending on what type of property that I buy. So it can be pretty lucrative to buy a property, create this big tax loss, via bonus depreciation and cost segregation study as long as I can actually use that tax loss. But just because I create the tax loss doesn't mean that I can use it. It's now subject to the passive activity loss rule, section 469 of the tax code. And all rental real estate is by default passive. It can only offset passive income or gain on sale from passive activities. My stock sale from Apple or the options that I receive through my W-2 job or the RSUs, those are not passive. Those are those are considered non-passive, so they're not able to be offset by my rental losses. So what that means is I have to move my rental losses from the passive bucket and into the non-passive bucket. And there's a couple ways to do that. The two main ways is to, are to earn less than $150,000 and qualify for that $25,000 passive loss allowance. The other way is to qualify as a real estate professional and materially participate in my rental activities, which is gonna be really, really, really hard to do if I have a full-time job and if I'm not married. But if my spouse is staying at home, maybe with the kids, uh, then my spouse could qualify as a real estate professional potentially as long as they um, spend 750 hours in real property trades or businesses and more time in those real property trades or businesses and they come back and materially participate in the rental activities. So no, unfortunately, my blanket answer is the cost segregation study, the bonus depreciation, the tax loss that is created from those two is not going to be able to be used to offset um, any sort of capital gain, any sort of income from stock options or RSUs, unless you're able to move the tax loss from your rental real estate out of the passive bucket and put it into that non-passive bucket. Thanks for watching today's video. Again, I hope you have a great Friday and a good weekend. We'll see you again on Monday.